Hey, this is Steve from Keyword Magazine. We're here with Jordan Rudish. That's me. Hey, everybody. Longtime great friend of the magazine, and as you know, Keyword is in Dream Theater, who are playing tonight, July 1st, in San Francisco. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk with Jordan about a few new developments. Awesome. Um, first, the new uh, Dream Theater record and tour, which is, as I understand, doing fabulously. It's been a great year, actually. We're in the last two legs uh, of the world tour. It's been wonderful. You know, this has been a big year for us because we uh, had Mike Mangini join us and replace Mike Portnoy. That was a big deal. But uh, the band is doing really well. We feel great. We're playing well. Um, and all is good. So one of the first things I want to talk about was how you've got a patch for patch duplicate of the chronos you use on stage, which right. we're going to go see in just a bit. And I just wanted to talk about how you have things zoned and set up to yes, play the multis that the fans are going to hear. You know, I've, I've always been about using an 88 note keyboard and trying to get the most out of it, uh, rather than taking the approach of uh, having many keyboards and having to reach for things. But everything from my custom kind of lead sounds, you know. <laughs> Funny is I'm a I'm a big like pitch wheel guy, turn kind of like joystick guy. In that um, I like the joystick because I can bend the, bend the nose, and while the nose is bent, I can I can push push it, and also use my other finger on the ribbon to add a little extra schmutz to the sound, which is cool because if I just if I just push up, it'll be kind of clean, but if I Yeah. You know, one of the big things about Dream Theater, especially on the new album, is the is the intensive kind of layering that's going on. We have a lot of really big themes, and like we have, uh, this, is one, this is one of the sections. <laughs> Shout out and be proud. Yeah. You get the, 
the subwoofers that are up front. Yeah, I mean, the, the old uh, speakers. Uh, it's still in that place. Uh, we're talking about the Spirit Carries On, which you have a whole lot of really interesting multi-layered mapping going on. Yeah, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice song for the Chronos, actually. What's cool about it, folks, is nice sweet. John and I do this thing at the beginning, which is kind of nice, a little improvisation. Um, and it's sweet that this starts out a nice kind of droney thing. And with this sound, I'm able to bring in some, some really nice choirs. Take them out. Easy stuff, but very effective. And of course, what's great about the Kronos is you can switch patches, and none of the effects get disturbed. So I'm, as soon as I'm ready to. so many insert effects in the Kronos, this is one great thing about the Korg system, is that you're able to um, have the organ be completely on its own. In fact, it can have its own ambience, its own reverb, its own rotary speaker. And if I hook that up, now I'm doing a little bit of jig, and it starts like go. Because uh, I've only got two hands and I'm playing piano. stock sample. I took that organ sound, I did it, and then I resampled it, and yeah. I was like, you know what? That's what I need the sound to be. Yeah. So this is great. I mean, I remember playing this song in the old days where I would have to switch from one patch to another and there would be a cutoff. So I can literally, like, hold this switch, do the palm wipe, and then and I'm on the next sound, and then I'm on the next sound. Like this sound has... lengthy one. Then I start getting towards the end where the whole thing picks up even more and then I start adding towards bass pedals in either my pinky or my thumb. So if I play a chord, well, I'll play the section. I've got my here's my piano and voices and I've got organs and chorus down here which don't really speak out of these speakers. But anyway, so it's like Mapping and interesting hand positions to make crazy things happen. And at the very end of the song, for the final beat, after we.
performance instrument. And what's great for me and for anybody is that Korg's whole concept is you put like all this you know, musical thought in one place. It's all very cohesive, so it can really work. Instead of you know, instead of the other approach, which is that cool in a different way, which is you know, to use a lot of software and to uh, and to make happen with you know a lot of different tools and kind of bring those into one area. But I like the whole idea of bring, of having an instrument that's designed to be cohesive and having it all there. And I can do you know basically what what I need to do. I can have my uh, my analog sounds and my samples all survive together, and everybody's you know happy. Here we are at the Dream Theater keyboard rig. The Dream Team. Yeah. We're not actually in a villain's lair from the Vintage Batman uh, TV series. <laughs> the next uh, level in keyboard stand making. This is the cleanest that my keyboard system has ever been, which is really cool. Partly uh, John Luca, my tech, is to credit because he thought of the idea of having all the pedals as part of the swiveling system, which saves us an enormous hassle. Before, I had like nine pedals. And I would be dancing around, doing all kinds of tricks. So now what happens is I'm able to move the entire thing around, and there is no messy chords. It's all very slick, and uh, it works really well. Matter of fact, one of the tricks is that I can be waving to the audience and kind of moving it around as well, and not really putting much energy, you know, behind pushing it. And that's because, you know, I've spent some time just kind of figure out how to use the pedals to get it going also. For many years, I had, a, I had have a very faithful stand builder named Patrick Slats out of Holland. And for this particular project, we wanted to try something a little bit different. So we found a guy um, who is near me. His name is Rick. And his last name I'm spacing out on. Nelson. Nelson. Rick Nelson. Actually, the first thing that I wanted was kind of like a nine-inch nail type of thing that, that would rock. Right, right, right. And I yeah. went to John Luca and I went to Rick. I said, oh, I'm imagining this thing. We could, it could rock, and then we could lock it down. It's step by step. It kind of evolved into this. Now, what I'm what I'm really curious about is if this swivel. Yes. You obviously are using a lot of separate outputs on the Kronos right. over here. Take a look at this around. Yeah. Um, we're using just about all of the uh, the audio outputs. Yes, we are. Um, if this swivels, and obviously you have a cable trunk going down through it. Right. You are putting some torque on those and some twist on those cables. Right. So how do you avoid problems? Exactly. With that? Please come into the shot and we can explain that. That'd be good. Ladies and gentlemen, fabulous. Don't look at John Bebe. Well, basically we have a slot right underneath the uh, stand here. Mm -hmm. About three inches wide that goes right underneath the uh, scene here. And basically, I allowed it enough room so that the cables move freely on their own. So they're kind of they're binded within each other, but there's also enough room that they can work. Right. Really so you're not going to keep doing 360s in the same direction? No, 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 we definitely don't. Do right. yes. no, we definitely uh, don't want to do that. Yeah, I was told not to do that. <laughs> but I have a lot of leverage. I go from, you know, this position, right, and I'll turn it all the way around as I'm doodling. degrees or better. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure I could go more, but I'm not pushing it. And actually what's cool is... This is controlling the V-Sense XT. Yes, yes, that's uh, basically, you know, the voice of the continuum in this band. You know, nowadays, Lippold, the maker of the continuum, may have uh, some very nice sounds built in, some very cool organic sounds, but you know, this is rock and roll. You have, you have pressure, you have sort of a ZX as your yes, ZX, yes. rather than natural yeah. loudness. Exactly. Although the sound is so distorted that as soon as you kick it in, it has a lot of volume. What are you using the iPad for? Um, what am I using the iPad for? Yeah, I use the iPad for a combination of my own apps, MorphWiz and SampleWiz. At the beginning of uh, On the Backs of Angels, you hear on the record, this is nice. Uh,
Kronos is so powerful, but really, just on this little device, we can do things that we can't do on any of the you know, keyboard technology, like be able to really accurately slide from one note smoothly and then have it be completely in tune. There's these little magical musical tricks that, you know, this can do. I can have it on lock pitch and... Start on a note, have it be completely in tune, and slide to another note, and then. Yeah, so just having all the independent voices and being able to bend one pitch and not the other, turn up the volume of one and not the other, and have that kind of fretless musicality is great. Real-time finger-controlled telephonic portamento with totally. the days of the. Yeah. Prophet 5 and CS80 we would have thought was like alien technology. Yeah, and then the other thing I run on here now is uh, is sample is and I've got some nice sounds that we play. <laughs> Is that kind of sliding control, the fretless yeah. kind of sounds, because it's so uh, so great at that. So I use a combination of the Kronos as well as Morphwiz to play. Wild stuff that you just really don't know exactly what's going to happen. 
regenerative stuff, which actually is a good lead into the next chapter of our uh, relay. Listen, Jordan has a brand new app. It's a prototype. This is the first look you're going to get about it. Um, and it's called Space Wiz. And it turns the orbits of planets into music. Really. Stay tuned. Space Wiz. Space Wiz. Yes. Yes. First ever peak anyone is getting of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Here you notice there are planets orbiting the sun. Um, and those aren't just eye candy. As you'd imagine, there's a synth and a bunch of synths under the hood there. But um, how the planets are orbiting and how they're interacting with one another, uh, their gravitational fields as regards each other, uh, different particle trails you create with your finger that hit the planets, these all affect what sounds you hear. Exactly. And it would be fair to call this a generative music. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, basically what happens is every planet gets assigned a different sound and various parameters. If we go into the planet mode, we can just touch that. And you can see that first of all you can mute and solo. You have a high note and a low note for the voices. You can um, assign an orbit rate and an orbit width and an orbit height and the mass of a planet. And all these things get get pretty interesting because that you can then take a pl one planet and assign its path as a modulator to another. Like you could take you know, this planet that's rotating around really fast and say, I want that to control the low pass filter. But at the basic level, what's really interesting about this, this program is it's going to ship with all these really beautiful sounds. Um, let's see, I think we have one that's kind of like playing now. And they are generative, so you can sit back and you can just kind of enjoy what's going on. And to load a sound, we can look, here's some sounds I've made recently. We can say floating in time, and I can hit load. And there we go. Let's float in time a little bit. Let's watch it in the full screen. And let's generate some more particles on the screen. And depending where the particles, you know, what planet they knock into, they're going to trigger the sounds of that particular planet. You can also go to the synth, and you can turn it on and play play live against it. We don't hear too much right this minute. We can we can randomize the synth, see what we get. You can also play on the screen of the main. Whatever patch you go to, let's say we want to pause this one, and we're going to load in something like uh, Flying East. There we go. Get a little more cut off. Yes, we can do that. More sound. We also change the attack time. There we go. And you can play on this little keyboard here, but you can also play in the main area. And you can have the filter like assigned to the vertical axis if you want. So you can take that down a little bit and come back here and uh, play. You can go in, you can take the view and you can make it basically whatever you want. You can get really close up to the sun. Back out. You take, let's say, planet one, which is this kind of sun planet. And say, you know what? We want that to be a lot bigger. So we go in and whoa, you make the whole thing big and we start influencing particles. So at this point, we're, play we're influencing particles and we're playing in real time with the live synth over the generative stuff that's going on. Go to master. What happens is there's a satellite that you can move around. It's right here. And you can angle the satellite uh, as well. That's just a little bit. So you can you know, maybe go into this, take the satellite, move it here. Well, that's the thing that looks like a shooting. Huh? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we can determine the angle of the satellite with this little controller here. You can see it actually moving, moving all around. Right? So you can have it shoot wherever you want. And it'll say, let's make this go. And you can adjust the power of it, too. So if you turn up the power, you can see that it's really spitting out these particles. Right? And you can adjust the rate. So you could have it 
Now, when a particle hits a planet, do you get a note, or do you get an alteration in the trajectory of that planet? It's going to be this one's about to hit. And uh, everything depends also on things like your quantization value. And it will play a note if it lands. In the mode I'm in right now, it's beat sync. So if a particle hits a planet and that beat lines up, you'll hear it. Right. So, and you also have to bounce off planets. So if I wanted to go into planet mode and select that planet, I could say, right now there's a lot of bounce on that planet. But if I take this bounce control down, you'll get less. So here we're knocking into it now, and you can see what kind of bounce we got from that planet. So what's really cool is we can take this whole thing and go into tonality. We can say, you know what, let's hear the whole thing in like E um, major pentatonic. So, yes, and it takes the whole, anything you're hearing, and it shifts the entire mode of the thing. So, and you can randomize everything, which gets very interesting. If you go to the preset menu, you can say, I want a random tonal patch, which will change every planet, right, and all the parameters, or I want a random rhythmic patch, which basically we've got an algorithm which goes in and kind of selects more rhythmic sounds than tonal, depending on what you choose. So let's say we want a random rhythmic patch. write your new 20th century uh, composition for piano and generative synth. <laughs> My guy, Tobias Miller, who I'm doing this with, just told me when I sent him these patches, he said, you know what, I, I, you know, I called up one of your patches, hit load, and then he just started to do some of his uh, programming work working on new features as he was just listening to this and enjoying it, because really it's changing all the time. You know, these particles are bouncing into planets and they're hitting different things, and it's just something that's constantly kind of evolving. And, the, and depending on modulation, this patch doesn't have much. It's just modulating the cutoff filter. Planet 8 is assigned to the cutoff filter. Right now, if we look at Planet 8, which is right here, we can see that it's moving there, right? And as it's moving, we're saying in the modulation that its X motion will affect the cutoff filter. So you get this whole nice little matrix of stuff that's going on. Yeah. You can record to an AIFF file, which cool. is something that all of us will want to do because you get something really cool you want to use it, and it's awesome. You can also tap tempo on it, which is uh, really fun. There's reverb, there's delay, there's chorus, a couple of filters. Um, you can take the entire movement of the, of the planets and actually time warp it so you can see that it's moving at a certain rate. You can say, you know what, that's all very nice, but let's take the whole thing and let's spin them around faster. Or maybe we want to spin them around the other way. So then you go into that, you can actually create something that has a nice little vibe. So time warping is very, very I can see gravity fun. effects of things on Yes, things there's also a lot of, yeah, just coming it's like up. It's an alpha, right, or maybe a beta? It's a beta at this point. I'm at the point right now where we're just like making patches for it and deciding, we you all know, have to decide which sounds are the ones we'll have in the release. And also I think I want to move this patch menu to the main screen. So when you're here, you're looking at the main screen, you can easily change patches and randomize as yeah. well. I think it would be cool to not have to go anywhere and to be able to get to the different sounds and also to be able to randomize. The randomize thing is, you know, it's so much fun. You just hear and you just press the button and you're like, Let's see what happens. So that's going to be key to me. To me, the beauty of creating something like this would be, you know, if it looks beautiful and sounds really cool and it's fun, then if you go in and you start going into, you know, your modulation thing, you start creating something really wild and different scales. You want to get adventurous. If it's deep, that's just like a benefit. Well, that is. That's it. That's space with the peak at space with. Yeah, and yeah. when can we might when might we see it? Yeah, I, I just think we're a couple weeks out from actually wow. submitting it to the cool. store. So you know that, and then that takes maybe a couple weeks uh, as well. So then it should be out. We're really close. I mean, I'm pleased with the sounds that are coming out, and it's really a lot of fun. And everybody seems to think it's looking really good and getting a lot of nice reaction. Right. So uh, sending it out to beta testers now.